I'm Ben, Ben Lavely. I work here at Best Made. I run the, uh, the business operations here. We're focused here at Best Made trying to make things of substance and things that will last that you will be able to, maybe you'll have to repair it after 20 years, but the integrity of the product itself will maintain through generations. And the consume and throw away system is very linear and we're interested in much more tightly closed loops and uh, while you can't close the loop entirely yet, we're trying to incrementally move closer to that, I think. And that's a lot of what I'm doing here. I'm trying to find people that can help us bridge those, those small steps in an individual product. And I think as a full curation of what we're trying to do, it can play into a larger idea. Council Tool, who we work with down in North Carolina, they've been around for four generations. It's a real culmination of knowledge and expertise in uh, the tool making world and that's very much to the point why we're working with them. We wanted something that was uh, designed by us but reinforced by over a century of, of experience. So working with them and using the axe as an example in particular is something that you can pass along to your son or generationally down through your family as, as an heirloom as opposed to going to the local hardware store and buying plastic handled axe that comes from China made of fiberglass that might splinter or dry and crack and break apart in the first two, two or three years of your purchase and then you buy a new one for $40 and then you buy a new one for $40 three years later but if you're willing to pay a slightly higher price and then understand that you'll never have to make that, make that purchase again as a lifetime cost benefit analysis it makes a lot of sense to me it's just a matter of how you can translate that into the goods of your, your daily life. I think that telling people where things come from and how they're made and who's making them, telling the story about the guy that is making what it is that they are using and appreciating on a daily basis, closing those gaps in the story, I think makes it personal. And if you can't make it personal to people, I don't think it will really resonate with them. But we're trying to make the stories behind the goods, the everyday goods in a lot of our, in our, a lot of our lives resonate and uh, we're just getting started. Yeah, my name is Hunter Craighill and I um, do product design for Best Made Company. You know, dream requirement for a, for a product is something that gets better with use and that, you know, gets more personal with use rather than um, so many other pieces of clothing or computers and technology that really only go downhill after you buy them. You know, working in this world has, has has shaped how I, you know, how I see everything, how I see everything in the world, how I see the internet and how I see clothing and every type of object that occupies one's life. You know, it almost seems like there's infinite possibilities for reinterpreting and re-envisioning and shedding a new light on a what may seem like a humdrum product, but when done correctly can be can be kind of magical. And that's kind of what we're always shooting for. We're not trying to be Apple and make the sexiest, newest piece of technology. We're just trying to bring stories to the, to the, to the small crafts and the small objects that occupy your day to day. And something, you know, put something in your life that you want to talk about and that you're proud of. And, you know, something that, that you know who made it and you want to support that person. My name is Peter Buchanan-Smith. I'm the founder of Best Made Company. In about 2009, the economy tanked and the world sort of seemed like it was coming to an end on many, on many levels. So I decided I was going to you know, t take matters into my own hands and got the opportunity to contribute some products to Andy Spade's store here in New York. For whatever reason, I, I you know, well, I guess I dipped deep back into my childhood and um, pulled out an, a, an axe and started painting the handles of them as just really a sign of respect for this tool that I loved and that I felt like was re very relevant at the time. Everything in the world seemed so complicated and there was a lack of a lot of virtues that, that to me were inherent in the axe itself like strength and fortitude or the simplicity of that tool or its manual function you know soon enough these the they just started selling i realized that it was a chance for me to really seize this as an opportunity to not only reach out to a lot of people and spread a really great message but 
to start a business for myself that could sustain me and hopefully sustain a lot of other people that would that felt the sort of same as me and felt the same about beautifully made products like our axes and we spent about two years developing that, that axe and then finally more recently have been able to branch out into selling other beautiful products most of which are designed by us and others are you know things that we could just never top so we're, we're working with other great makers of things early on we realized that there is a an abundance of beautiful old axes especially obviously the axe head you know those you know last for a very long time there were once let's say you know the turn of the last century you know there were 300 axe makers in this country all of them making you know thousands and thousands of axes so there's a there's a lot of them still out there they're made better than most axes you'd find today it's most importantly just to have an axe it doesn't necessarily have to be a best made axe and if they're going to find if they're going to have an axe then we you know want them to have the best axe that they can get we started steering them towards these axes these old axes on ebay uh, where you can get a beautifully made axe for you know twelve dollars, but you have to put the time into it to recondition it and refurbish it, and that's where the fun comes in. You know, it, it's it's really an amazing experience to bring one of these old tools back to life. You know, they have so much character to them, and then to go out and actually use it, you really it's almost like you feel like you built you re, you well, you did you rebuilt that tool, and you have the the owner then has such a, a deeper connection to it. Uh, so that has been a popular series where we'll go to different cities or um, uh, locations and conduct like a workshop where people will come, they'll bring their axes and together we sit down and we'll like refurbish these axes. Everyone's talking about reusing things, you know, that it makes sense that rather than just go out and buy a new one to actually go find something that is, that's already there and just bring, you know, with a little bit of hard work, uh, just bring it back to life.